Hi, this is David Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. Today I'm going to show you uh, how to do a room addition or an extension to your house. This is where it all starts, right on the ground with the concrete foundation. Although we had to do a little plumbing here first and reroute some of it. and So we'd still have usable water in the house. We extended this water heater out. So everything's still hooked up in the house. We're going to get this foundation in. And when the time comes, this stuff will all be moved. So there's your uh, bathroom. We're going to be pushing the bathroom out a little bit. And then the master bedroom is going to be coming out. What we're going to do is put some half inch rebar around this. We're going to put uh, one rebar horizontally. Uh, one at the bottom of the footing, one at the top, and then we're gonna we're gonna dowel every uh, 18 inches along this house foundation. We're gonna drill some holes in there, some 5 8 inch holes. That way we can put some half inch rebar in there, and we can uh, fill up that little space around there with some uh, Simpsons XP epoxy. Actually, I used a different type of epoxy on this one. I didn't use the Simpson. I used some other stuff that uh, Lowe's carries that I really haven't seen anywhere else. But this is the second time I used it. And it's, you can just use a regular caulking gun. You don't have to get any fancy setup that Simpson makes. You just get a good old fashioned regular caulking gun. It seems to work just fine. This stuff is durable. So that's the epoxy I used here. I don't I don't remember the name of it, but it worked pretty good. Now I'm gonna set this up. This is the existing patio here. So then I gotta uh, pour this foundation. I think it was about two and a half, three inches higher than this patio. So I'm just gonna drill in a two by six here to give me something to work with. Put a two by six in, then I'll screw a two by four to that two by six, and now I'm at height real sweet real simple that saw cut on that existing patio wasn't right on the money that's why i had to use the two by six to kind of cantilever out over that existing uh patio because my ed the congress i gonna that's the way i'm gonna fill up see i could have put a form in there but then you'd have that gap between the foundation and the patio it would kind of be an eyesore type deal so i just went ahead and poured it all at one one pour I checked this uh, existing house foundation for level with my laser level and it's in real good shape a lot of a lot of times you get in these older houses they could be off anywhere from an inch to two inch I've ran into them where they were off like four inches in the run of a house just from settling you can see the saw cut here and how it was broken out and it's pretty well off of the actual building line but you'll never know it the way I'm doing this So now I just have to level out from both ends. So let's say for instance the house was on level. Well you'd still have to match it. You know you don't want to um, make it a different. You wouldn't want to make the new stuff level and have the house slope. So you just have to match the house. Whatever it might be. That's what you have to go with. Later on down the road if it was on level you could always go inside the house and throw some uh, self leveling floor leveler on top of it and level out the entire area. That would be the way you'd want to address that kind of a situation. Uh, there is some companies that call mud jacking the foundation up and this and that but uh, much easier just to throw some floor leveler. A lot less money too. Just throw some floor leveler on there and you're good to go. You got a little bit shorter ceiling height, however, but I don't think you're going to notice it unless you're uh, a basketball player or something. Uh, 
Oh, I'm just going to use some 2x12. Matter of fact, this is probably the same 2x12 I used on the other foundation in my other video. Because uh, I use it over and over and I just keep oiling it up with used motor oil that I salvage whenever I change my oil. This sidewalk here has got a little slope to it. So what I have to do is uh, rip my board. Either that you can rip the board the to the end end board in this situation or you can just set it high and snap a line on the inside. Um, if you do it flush though and rip your board you get it's a lot easier to finish it flat. Here's a little box out I'm gonna do for the for the new shower stall. It's gonna be a little uh, walk in shower saws they're gonna build that up with some mortar at some point to get it to the height they want in the right slope that they want to get to the drain and they'll put tile on top of that now I'm throwing some six mil visqueen it's a little vapor barrier there just in case um, soil conditions aren't that great you want to put some plastic on there Uh, you can put sand or gravel over the plastic now there's the epoxy I was talking about it's just a typical caulking gun but it is a two-part it's a one nozzle with a uh, corkscrew coming out so it mixes as it comes out and what I like to do with the epoxy especially on a um, you know a, a day where it's below 70 75 degrees or so I set this epoxy in my engine compartment with the engine off of course I just kind of set it under the hood for just a little bit just to kind of warm it up that way you don't have to squeeze that trigger that hard and it just comes right out nicely so even though I've got that little recessed area to set up I'm gonna pour to the top of that 2x6 on the ends on the outside edge of it and then on the inside it'll go to the bottom so it'll still be a continuous foundation and then on the outside edge it'll be full height but uh, it's important that we run the rebar through on that narrow area there otherwise you could pull a couple cracks off the edges of those two by sixes and with that rebar going through in between that narrow area there uh, even if it were to crack the crack wouldn't separate or heave that's that's really the purpose of rebar not necessarily to crack to stop cracks it's just to prevent cracks from shifting also oh yeah I didn't put any fiber mesh in this one normally I put fiber mesh in them but this one was pretty beefy what we did here as far as the depth goes and we've got and it's a short it's a real small area. But we did go with a 3000 PSI mixed design. There's the epoxy. And you can see that original foundation that that's a cold joint was what they did apparently is they poured the foundation then they came back and they poured the slab on top of it. And you can see the separation on it all around the house. That's how they kind of did them back then. They do, you know, maybe five, six of those a day in the neighborhood on footings, and they'd come back and do the slabs five or six the next day. Now, as so you can see, we've broken that stucco out along the bottom of the house. The reason that is all that stucco is going to come out eventually. And that wall is going to be pushed out as well. But right now what you got to do is uh, be able to see the other slab 
so that way when you pour this concrete you don't pour it high you don't pour it low but you just pour it at the right level to match the house but it is better to be low than high when you are doing these because it's a lot easier to come up than go down like with a grinder you'd have to grind it to go down but if you wanted to come up you just throw, float a little material on there real quick which is much easier than grinding or chipping Now, when we after we rot it, we use a uh, you can use any type of bowl float. You can use a wood bowl float, a magnesium bowl float, fiberglass bowl float, um, and there's probably some other choices as well that I don't really know of. But basically, what the purpose of it is is just to get it flat. So I actually have modified a 2x12 when we, I actually didn't have a bowl float at the time or forgot to bring it so I had to use a piece of 2x12 and uh, scab on a handle to that and that was my bowl float. Now I'm going to put these 5 8 inch anchor bolts in. I believe I'm going to place them every uh, 4 foot on this one. I kind of went through it again with my level and uh, I really got underneath that stucco just to make sure I was at the right level and found that uh, I was a little high on the concrete so I, I just dragged a little bit out. And you know the more stucco, if, you, if you're going to do this probably should break out a little bit more stucco so you can really see that floor really well that existing floor so you get, a, you get a lot easier to match it I basically went along that whole entire edge there and expose that really well along the edge of the existing concrete and then I uh, actually re-rotted the whole thing and I probably generated about some um, eight shovelfuls of ex ex excess concrete just by re-rotting it So I'm pulling the wood stakes out and the 2x6s on that recessed area for the shower stall. It's actually my 2x6 two, six, two by six was actually buried a little bit at the bottom so I wanted to get those out. So I kind of float it in nice and smooth. Even though it's probably not necessary it just looks better. Now when I pull these 2x6s off the bottom, the concrete flowed up and under that so it actually filled in the space of the uh, patio. The only problem with doing it like this is when that patio gets removed at some point, I'm going to have a little piece of concrete sticking out there that the new patio will have to adjoin to. Um, I'll probably just have to use a little jackhammer and chip it down a little bit that way we can pour over that with the new patio Because you wouldn't want that sticking out especially if you're doing something decorative and colors or stamp You won't want that little piece sticking out there. That's just the basics
Now if they brought the stucco down to the bottom it would probably hide that but uh, typically you don't want to bring the stucco down to grade because you need that weep screen to be open so it can drain so that will definitely be exposed that where it adjoins the patio there. I'm just going to put a trowel finish on this no broom just a smooth trowel and then uh, that's all you need for this here's what your final product looks like now we're ready to start framing You can't really see underneath that 2x4 plate there, but it's in there somewhere. I could feel it with the edge of my trowel. That's the main thing. If you can't see it, you can always feel it with your trowel. Anyway, thank you for watching my video. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, you know what to do.